This is the first session in the group study material for the Fit for Life course in Lent 2021 at St Barnabas Middlesbrough. We're going to start with words from Psalm 1, the first three verses. Blessed are those who do not walk in step with the wicked, or stand in the way that sinners take, or sit in the company of mockers, but who delight in the law of the Lord, and meditate on his law day and night. They are like a tree planted by streams of water which yields its fruit in season, and whose leaf does not wither. Whatever they do prospers. Before we come to look at those verses in detail, can I say a little bit about the Fit for Life course? We're going to be looking at the spiritual practices that are at the heart of discipleship. We'll use the Sermon on the Mount in the mornings, along with a range of passages from across scripture. And then in the evenings, we'll focus on the practices that Jesus seemed to see as most important. What we can see in Psalm 1 is that God wants blessing for us. He wants us to flourish. The picture of somebody walking with God is like a tree which has an abundant water supply. Now it's worth saying that what God means as flourishing is not necessarily the same as our surrounding culture means by flourishing. It will not mean an exemption card from hardship. And we've got gained some insight into that in the last few weeks, notably as we look through, through the book of Job. But these spiritual practices will give us strength with which to face the hardships that life inevitably brings. Now Lent is a good moment to focus on ways that we could change for good and a good moment to focus on ourselves in that regard rather than worrying about how other people need to change. As Jesus said, it's more important to worry about the plank in our own eye than the sawdust speck in another's. The spiritual practices that can be seen across scripture and across the Christian tradition will include practices around prayer, practices around how we use our material possessions and wealth, practices too around fasting and how we use our time. These are what Richard Foster has called ways of disciplined grace. All in the Christian life depends on God's grace. We cannot earn favour with God by what we do, but we can cooperate with God in our spiritual growth. Just as a gardener cooperates with the natural world in order to make the plants flourish. There's a, a ridge in the Lake District called Striding Edge. It's got sharp drops on either side and that can be an image for what Christian faith is about. On one side we are in danger of making it into a set of rules and saying you know keep these, keep your nose clean and God will be pleased. But God, we see in the Gospels how it's the Pharisees who Jesus rejects who go down that route. And then another way is to say, well, it's all up to God. God will forgive me for whatever I do. I don't really have to do anything. And again, uh, that, that is no use at all. How will we grow as people if we ha have that attitude? Rather, we need the way of disciplined grace. Um, a narrow path that will take us to the summit. So with that in mind, I want to turn to verse 2 of Psalm 1. The psalmist says that those who are blessed are what people who meditate on God's law day and night. 
we might like to look up the places where the word meditate appears in scripture and it appears a fair bit. Uh, Psalm 63 verse 6 talks about how we should meditate on God himself. Psalm 119 verse 27 talks about how we should meditate on God's works and here we are to meditate on God's law. It's worth remembering that Christian meditation and meditation as understood from the Eastern faiths like Hinduism and Buddhism, they are quite different. Certainly the Eastern faiths are worthy of respect, but they focus on God as an impersonal force, where for the Christian we are entering a relationship with God and we in turn are meant to grow more uh, into the persons we are meant to be, and not less. Let me try three questions on you for your group study. As we begin this Fit for Life program, you might think about what a spiritual fitness test would look like. My father-in-law recently had to go and have a test on his heart and there were all kinds of things that the medics made him do. Well, what would a spiritual fitness test look like? What questions do you think should be in it? That's question one. Question two, let's look at Psalm 1 verse 2. It speaks of us needing to be people who meditate day and night. Now looking at that psalm and looking across the psalms and across the Old and New Testaments, what do you think meditates day and night means? What do we meditate on? And what does that meditating process look like? That's question two. Question three. We could see the different spiritual practices mentioned in scripture as a fitness program. And any fitness instructor will tell you this, build up gradually. If you want to run a marathon, you don't start by trying to run 26 miles in your first training session. With that in mind, that idea of building up gradually. Where do you think you need to start? 